Hey, John Sanmez from SimpleProgrammer.com. I have another question here in Hawaii. <laughs> uh, this one was good. I, I, as a response to a blog post I did on negotiating your salary, uh, which if you haven't had a chance to read that, go ahead and search on SimpleProgrammer.com and uh, and read that. I, I it's a pretty long post, but I talk about a lot of uh, a lot of tactics for negotiating your salary. So this is related to that. Uh, which basically, I'll, I'll paraphrase a little bit of this here to shorten it, but um, in fact, I, you know, question for you that, that have been watching these videos, do you like me to read the entire email for someone's email, even if it's kind of long, or do you prefer that they kind of just give you the gist of the email? Uh, so, yeah, let me know, let me know what you think about this, because sometimes the best questions are kind of the longest ones, but it takes a little bit to digest and to read. Anyway, um, <coughs> earlier this year I received a bonus. Soon after that, I decided to start interviewing to see what's out there for a senior software developer and posted my resume online. Shortly after that, I was contacted to interview for a so software architect. Um, <coughs> not a title I previously considered, but decided I had nothing to lose, so I interviewed. <coughs> I totally impressed the three technical interviews and basically was offered the position in a matter of days at that for an amount that was higher than what I was making, but not enough to leave a cushy job. Okay, smart move there. Uh, after turning down that offer, I had another interview where I once again was able to hold my own and, uh, and basically was offered the position. I negotiated a bit with them and got them to increase their offer significantly. Okay, good move and good practice. Um, I emailed my boss that I had an offer and he asked to meet. Okay, this, is, this might be good. Um, he basically matched the offer and gave me the architect title, which is where I'm currently at. Okay, so that sounds good at this point. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of my opinion on where you might actually be, where you might not realize that you're at right now in, in a minute here, but let, let me read on. The drive is the only downside to the current job. So next year, after the bonus, I'm planning on looking for a job that's closer to my home. Okay, so I can see that. You want to get the bonus, and then... <laughs> um, in my negotiation with my boss, I'm uh, planning on not, not using another offer as a negotiation as a negotiation tactic. My reasoning, one, my current composition is slightly above market rate, so I don't think that I can make that much more. That might might be true, but might not. Um, if again I say that I have another offer, he will assume correctly that the following year I will once again want to negotiate. True. That that's that's a good point. Uh, three, in order for me to stay here I would need a significant increase, like fifteen percent, to make up for the long commute. So basically I'd need a salary that is not based on what others will pay me, but instead what I'm worth to the company. I realize this is <coughs> a risky move where I could be overplaying my hand and he can simply let me go. But this is a risk I'm willing to take because I can afford to take a pay cut to work closer to home. The way I see it, it's low risk, high reward option. Hoping to get your feedback on my approach. So, um, let's start with uh, basically the like where you are now, where I think you are now at, at the company. So you've gone out, you went and you interviewed uh, at a, a couple of other companies, got some offers. Then you basically told your boss, "Hey, I've got an offer. Um, I'm gonna essentially leave if um, <coughs> if you don't offer me something better." So he gave you an architect title and matched that offer, a and it was and it was actually an increased offer because you negotiated. So this is a pretty good pay bump uh, at this point. Uh, you're basically, you know, you want to look at what is your relationship with this company right now. So they kind of know that you're probably not necessarily the happiest. Um, you've, you've already used this tactic, which you can really only do once, which is to present another offer. And you kind of recognize this because you've said that, you know, if you do this again, right, they're basically just going to show you the door or maybe they'll match your offer until they can replace you. Like, it's, um, <coughs> right now you're still on a little bit of shaky ground, I would say, because once you've done this, once you've negotiated in this way, which I'm not saying don't do it, <coughs> this is good. I mean, this is a way, I've used this tactic before, you know, uh, but, but you can really pull it once, like I said. But once you've done this, you've kind of set yourself out to be someone who's, who's somewhat shrewd. Which is again not necessarily a bad thing, but um, but you are definitely like if they you're now have changed the dynamics of the relationship where they realize that you know 
what your value is and that uh, that it's not a loyalty thing it's a monetary it's a you know it's a it's a business transaction so what I mean by that is uh, now if they have the opportunity to replace you because they have someone else that could do the job or you know from a purely business perspective they'd be more likely to so so all this is to say that your relationship at your current job is probably a little bit strained by doing this. Again, not saying that you shouldn't have. It's good to negotiate a higher salary and to use an offer, you know, one time to, to up your salary and up your title. But it'll take some time <coughs> before that history disappears and you would have to consider it somewhat strained at this point. So it, it re reduces the value of your current job a little bit. Um, as far as you know where you're at now, I, I mean, I think you you have it pretty much spot on here. You know, some of the points I disagree with. You, you're, if your current compensation is slightly above market rate, you don't think you can make that much more. Uh, you might be surprised. There, you know, there's definitely situations where you can make a lot more than what the market rate is, especially if you're really valuable to a company. But like you said on your second point. Uh, if you tried to pull this tactic again, that would be a very, very bad move. In fact, uh, you know, I, I would not do that. It's just not not a smart move. Um, and then, you know, you'd you'd have to basically get an, another increase. You know, however, you do this at this current situation, it, it's going to be dangerous for you. I mean, I basically, in my mind, I don't think I would stay at your current company even if they offer you more money at this point because you you will have to pass up some other opportunity and they're really they're going to be looking to replace you at that point so I even if you you just have to be careful here right because let's say that you have to kind of decide are you leaving this current job or not so you might interview for some other jobs right that are closer to home in a year after you get your bonus from this job that makes sense that's smart and let's say you get a really good offer, and you you now want to uh, you you have to decide basically, uh, are you going to leave the job and not not accept any kind of counter offer? And you have to make this up in your in your mind ahead of time because what's likely to happen? Let's say that you get this other job that's closer to home. You go to your boss and you say you put in your two week notice and say um, <coughs> I'm taking another job. It's closer to home. The commute's better and it's more pay. Your boss is probably going to say at this point, well wait a minute because they've already invested a little bit in you, right, to increase your title and pay you more. Um, what can we do to get you to stay? And at this point, your answer is going to have to be nothing, right? <laughs> and, and then you're going to have to mean it. And maybe, I mean, th so, so there's a chance that they will say, no, 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 seriously, what can we do? And they might start throwing offers at you and offering you perks. Maybe you can work from home certain days or if they do that then you might consider staying but you're basically not even if they invite you to negotiate with them you're going to say no the only way you're going to say say yes is if they actually throw like an offer at you and, and my reasoning for this is because if you negotiate the second time like you said you're going to be on a very straight like you're just going to be waiting to to get the axe because that's going to happen if they basically try to do everything they can to stop you from walking out the door, then it the dynamics has changed again. Now it's because of them, but you didn't try to pull a negotiation, right? Your intent was just to leave. So that's, I think, you know, that's got to be very, very clear. So that's why I said you have to make up your mind ahead of time and make that decision. Basically say you're either going to stay or you're going to leave, and you cannot negotiate again. So, so I think, I mean, basically I'm telling you what you kind of already said, but I'm, I'm just, I thought it'd be good to explain this uh, to, to, to other viewers um, because the situation does come up pretty often, and, uh, and it is a, tr I mean, it's a good situation to be in. Uh, the other thing, you, I mean, you might consider if you, maybe you move closer or maybe you ask for a couple of days to work from home or some other way to make this, this work, but, uh, but I have no problems with, um, you know, in, commuting is, is, it's definitely sucky. <laughs> it's one of the worst, uh, the, one of the worst things that can can make your job good or bad. More so than your the environment and what you're working on is is how much time you spend commuting. So so it's definitely smart to to think about that. But really consider you know whether if you're going to stay at this company or go to a different one. 
and then you know like you said there's that cushy job factor which is if you start a new job obviously it's it's more difficult because you have to learn the ropes and there's more risk involved because you're more likely to get cut when you're in a job that you've already been at and you're comfortable there you know that's that can be a good thing so yeah interesting uh, situation thanks for bringing this up and for your your suggestion you also mentioned that uh, that you should negotiate your salary when you already have a job which is very very true I agree with that 100%. So good luck. Let me know how it goes with this. And uh, and if you're watching this video, uh, if if you have questions, if you'd like me to uh, answer, you know, send me an email, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you what you think, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and uh, I will talk to you next time. Take care.